Okay, so let's take a look at pad in Vital. So I'm just going to play this through, and as you can see in the patch, there's actually quite a lot of movement already built into the patch here. But I wanted a little bit more, even more movement. I wanted even more evolution and movement in this. And Harmonic Split, really useful for that. So the quickest way to learn how to use anything in the Spectral Suite is to solo everything. So if we solo this second section here, this harmonic section here, and turn the mix all the way up, we're only gonna hear that second band, right? You can hear exactly what's going on here. This is the original, and this is the extracted harmonic audio from this second band here. This is what the first band sounds like, right? So you can instantly hear this different tone. This is a more hollow tone, this is a more typically harmonic tone, more like rich texture. And this is ultra weird. We do have some uses for this, but I find it to be mostly if you're trying to get some weird sort of artifacts, this is a great way to get it. But we're gonna stick with this second one. I found this is really effective. So listen to the original pad and then we add on this extra bit and we've got some like unique movement here, right? It's quite musical, quite organic based off of what's happening in the original patch here. So one thing I found about this is like, okay, this sounds a little bit raw, right? So a very easy way to work with this is you click on this evened button here and it opens up the possibility to set an effects chain just for this harmonic content. And what I've got here is a reverb chain. So I just turn that on and instantly we have something a little bit smoother. We can turn the reverb up as much as we want to smooth it out more. Or we can turn it off without it. So we'll go somewhere in the middle, turn this down. And so already we have this like other layer to this pad that would be really difficult to sound design without this plugin, right? So this is our loop that we're gonna be working with the other things. The first thing we want to look at is more of the harmonic split on the drums. So this is very interesting on the drums. Let's just solo each one of these bands again, these harmonic bands, and see what we got here. So we again, we have this like, very different textures to play with here. It's, it's really interesting because you, you can build your beat and then once you, once you put it through this harmonic split, you got three different flavors that are all built off of your beat that you can choose from. You know, the first band, obviously it sounds more hollow, right? A more hollow sound. This sounds more like regular harmonics, textures. And then here's the, the weird one. This one sounds like some weird artifacts are coming out. Okay, this is the original very clean, then can you hear that whip that happens before every single hit? There's a whip, it's like whoop, 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 right? It, it, to me, that makes it way more interesting and lively. So it's just this really unique thing, like you, where else are you gonna get that effect? So let's just put that in and out with the mix, right? So this is in. We can just like get a blend, right? So we don't have to go 100% or zero. We can go like, even like 50 to 70. You still get the real full hit from the original and then you get this nice like organic stuff happening around it, right? So I really like that, that's really awesome. So a simple use of this device is creating your own phaser. Right, and it's a very manual, hands-on kind of phaser. I'll show you what I mean. So let's just play this bass here. Let's just go through the bare basics. Easiest way, let's solo each band, right? So this is without, 
Anything happening? Now let's solo the first band. Solo the second band. Third band. Okay, so again, we have four different flavors and they're just basically focusing on, as you can see here, just different bands based on the color, right? You can see exactly where they are. So I chose to do a very similar thing and just focus on one band, right? This fourth purple band and turn this up by, let's say, 9 dB. Now let's work that back in with the mix. So this is not that interesting yet, but if we introduce an LFO, here's one I created earlier, um, now it starts to get interesting. And if you're wondering what how that's happening, I'll show you right now. Spin. So if I move that down, move it up, you can hear that resonance moving, right? So basically, I'm just hooking up this LFO to the spin amount, and it's just going up and down to, to the maximum and minimum values, right? With this shape you can see here. And the fun thing about this is, if you have a wrap around like, like I have here on this sawtooth LFO, um, it will, you'll see there's no jumping, right? So it actually seamlessly keeps rotating with no break. This is the cool thing about this. You're creating a, what's called a barber pole phaser effect. And uh, it's very easy. This is very simple. If you wanted to change the direction of the phaser, you can just change the direction of the LFO. You can hear it's going upwards now, perpetually upwards. So, so if you really wanted this to, you could make it alternate for different parts of the song. So that's what I mean by like more control over a phaser. This is something that is definitely not a feature of most phasers, right? So if you're someone that really wants more control over which direction your phaser goes, and if you want to create that barber pole effect where the phaser is perpetually going downwards or perpetually going upwards, this has got you covered. This is pretty awesome for that. The first thing that I thought of when I saw this plugin is I really want to get access to details. Right, and a lot of the details in audio are in the quiet section. And how many plugins can say that they're just going to dig out the details for you to process or to accentuate? This is very unique because it isolates the quiet material. And let me show you what it sounds like here. This is the original electric piano, okay? This is just the quiet part of that electric piano. You can instantly hear this is a very unique extraction. You're not going to get access to this with a compressor or an expander or anything like that. So you put these two things together and it's already bringing out this like really, again, organic detail. That's what I like about these plugins. It brings out organic detail. It brings out organic textures. But the way that it's extracting sections of the sound, it's very granular. So that's what the result is very organic. So let's go back to the original, right? And then with a big mix of the quiet, we are boosting the quiet part of the signal a lot. Now we can take this a, a one step further by adding distortion only to the quiet section. So I want to demonstrate like why I did this.
So, you know, that's pretty special because I'm able to apply quite heavy, intense distortion just to the quiet parts because the details don't actually trigger the distortion to explode everything, right? So it's still preserving like all the loud stuff, like the fundamental frequency of the keyboard, that would destroy a distortion unit. But because we're just feeding it just some of the details, it's actually just distorting the details only, right? That's very interesting to me. So this, this is a very interesting experiment and we need to take this further, of course, but just for this video, I'm just scratching the surface on this. So the next thing that I tried with this, we can actually use the transient split to bring out more of the transients of only the details. So this we're now like doing like inception here. We're putting a transient split inside of the loud split. The way I did that was, again, we click on the quiet window here, and that opens up the effects that are only going to be applied to that little extraction of audio, the quiet section. And we put this through the transient split, and let's see what happens. So we're really, really bringing out that mechanical sound of the keyboard here, that clicky sound. And of course, with the mix knob, we can just dial it in, man. So like if we, we turn this all the way down, right? Bring this back, crank up this mix knob, get more and more of these transients. But of course, the transients that we're bringing out are only of what's considered the detail, what's considered the quiet material, which I find is really interesting. Yes, we could put the transient split on the entire keyboard, but in this case, I actually just wanted to bring out transients that are in the details to bring out this bold delicacy. It's a weird sort of contrast and I really like it. So this is without the transient split. And this is with. Okay, so that's a good example of one way to use the loud split. The last thing that I wanted to look at on the loud split is automating this lower threshold here. So this is the lower threshold, this control right here, this green bar. I have it set to like negative A1. Let's listen to what happens when we automate this. It's like a really weird filter, right? So like... Isn't that interesting? So if we were to... If we were to play this in the mix and automate it, right, we could use this as some sort of like really unique filter. Let's try it right now. So the last thing I want to do is just basically turn off all the Spectral Suite plugins and then turn them on. You can hear the difference of like how much it's doing to this whole sound. So we're gonna turn them all off. This is what it sounds like. So, and then we're gonna turn them on. So I hope that it gives you an idea that how like how much these things can shape. And I, I hope that it also gives you the idea to just open these things up and solo each band. It's the easiest way to use it. Just solo each band and choose a flavor. You can go a lot deeper than that. But these things, you got to learn how to get the starting point. And to me, this is very easy to get into. If you just start with soloing things, 
you'll really learn how to do it. And when you choose a flavor, be careful to really bring out the flavor that you want to. So boost, for instance, in this case, we boosted this fourth band. And on the drums, we soloed, we're actually keeping this soloed and we're just playing with the mix knob. So I hope that helps you guys. And yeah, I hope you have a lot of fun playing with these plugins. I think these are incredible plugins. So guys, have a lot of fun. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day, guys. Bye.